But we must be cautious not to get so caught up in the promise of immense profits from uranium, diamonds, and natural gas that we compromise our fundamental environmental well-being. We all share the resp responsibility to be guardians of the planet's overall health. The resource management structures created by our land claims agreements provide Inuit and Northern governments with a degree of control over how our lands and resources are developed. Development in the Arctic is not just shipping out resources and making lots of money. It should also be about long-term benefits for permanent residents and respect for the environment. The sustainable exploitation of Arctic natural resources under the scrutiny of land claims agreements, uh, the land claim agreements regulatory bodies promise to provide much needed jobs for Inuit. But maximizing job opportunities requires being properly equipped to take advantage of them. Otherwise, benefits will continue, as in the past, to bypass Arctic communities, generating wealth for others and disappointment and frustration for Inuit. Addressing the challenges I have discussed will not be an easy task. Climate change, sovereignty, resource development, and globalization, these outside forces are putting unimaginable pressure on us. They are testing the adaptability of governments businesses and organizations locally, regionally, and internationally. I am encouraged by Canada's recent action to file a complaint with the World Trade Organization over a ban on marketing of seal products in Europe. In this instance, Canada is stepping up to the plate to support of our local economies. Strong economies means robust, and sustainable northern communities. A healthy, confident, and prosperous northern population will create the foundation for keeping the Arctic so solidly within Canada. Arctic sovereignty depends on people who live and work in the north. For generations, Canadians have professed to be a northern nation. In reality, the Arctic has been on the margins of Canadian priorities. Recent events, however, are causing a shift. Today, we are scrambling to respond to, Can to Russia's planting of a flag on the ocean floor under the North Pole. A quarter of the world's hydrocarbons are probably in the Arctic Basin. No wonder countries other than Canada are laying claim to the Arctic. Control of Arctic seas, along with the fabled Northwest Passage, could indeed fall into the hands of others. Last summer, the Prime Minister visited the Arctic to announce plans for a deep water port at Nanisivik and an army training base at Resolute Bay. He used this visit to promote a use it or lose it strategy for promoting Canada's sovereignty in the Arctic. In early October, he reinforced this new strategy by pledging to spend millions of dollars to improve the Port of Churchill rail connection. He also released details of a series of research projects as part of Canada's contribution to International Polar Year. He was again quoted as saying, like I have said so many times before, use it or lose it. It is the first principle of sovereignty. For Inuit, these comments were um, kind of, uh, are, well, the, the comments were welcome in terms of what he had to say in other areas, but the lose it or use it comment was a bit ironic because Inuit have been living in and using the Arctic for millennia. And we have no intention of leaving the Arctic anytime soon. Coherent Arctic policies, both domestic <laughs> Coherent Arctic policies, both domestic and foreign, 
must be grounded in long-term strategic thinking and the substantial investment of time, talent and money in both infrastructure and the social fabric of the region. Arctic sovereignty rests on viable communities, sound civil administration, and responsible environmental management, not just ports, training facilities, and military exercises. Last year's speech from the throne delivered some very encouraging messages regarding the government's intentions of assert for asserting Canada's sovereignty. I was pleased to hear the Prime Minister articulate an understanding that coherent policies for the Arctic have sig significant economic and social development components. Canada's claims in the Arctic must be solidly grounded in the daily activities and contributions of Inuit and other Canadians for whom the Arctic is home. Building northern communities should be a vital part of any sovereignty agenda. There is no one in this room, I'm sure, who has not heard the dire warnings about climate change. And the Arctic is at the epicenter of this looming threat. The rate of climate change is dramatically higher in northern, northern latitudes. The interagency UN panel on climate change recently produced a report based on solid scientific consensus, revealing that the Arctic ice is melting three times faster than models had earlier predicted, and the earlier predictions were alarming enough. Put simply, the Arctic is melting, even though we don't feel it in the wintertime, with dramatic consequences for all of us. The impacts of rising sea levels will be felt equally by rich homeowners in the Florida Keys and poor fishermen in Bangladesh. And Canada is already experiencing the economic consequences of climate change, and the stakes will, go, will only get higher in the future. None of us want to face our children and grandchildren with lame excuses for inaction. Now I'd like to turn to the, to the uh, title, The Arctic is a Region Whose Time Has Come for Canada. We all know here, at least the Inuit that are in this room, for us the Inuit, it is our homeland, our special place on Earth. But for all Canadians, the Arctic must become part of our set, shared sense of who and what we are, of what defines us. and what we are accountable for, not just a remote region with beautiful ice scapes and polar bears. Part of that accountability is accepting that the Arctic is a place where people live, where families are raised, where problems need solving, and where natural resources exist that will continue to nurture the economic development of Inuit and Canada. An educated population ready to take up new jobs and economic opportunities in the North is the backbone of successful economic development. I encourage businesses to provide more opportunities for our youth, to stimulate them to finish school and pursue, pursue professions to assist them with scholarships and in other innovative ways. The Northern Lights Conference and Trade Show will allow us to strengthen relationships between northern regions and to establish new relationships between southern and northern businesses. We will see cultural presentations and displays of regional art and artists. This is a unique opportunity for everybody who participates and attends the event to learn that the Arctic is a growing, diversified economic force. And let's remember, we are working to build a strong economy for our children who are our future. Nakumi Marialuk, and thank you.